Well, I want to tell you about two guys. One is an eight-year-old Middle Eastern prince. The other is a five-year-old black kid from Chicago. And as strange as this sounds, my hope uh, for today is that God will use these two guys and their stories to show you a reflection of yourself that will be good for your soul. I'm going to start with the Middle Eastern prince. Uh, This eight-year-old kid, his name is Josiah. And if you want to read his story a little bit more fully, you can do that in the book of 2 Chronicles, chapter 34 and 35 in the Bible. But uh, Josiah, when he's a young kid, his his dad is uh, messed up. He's got a, a bad dad, right? His dad is evil, sins all over the place and causes heaps of suffering. And maybe already there's uh, some of you who can sympathize or even uh, relate to Josiah on that. Uh, But because of some of that evil that his dad's been mixed up in, his dad actually gets murdered when Josiah's eight years old. So he's now lost his dad. And of course, when you're the prince and your dad dies, uh, that's even more complex because now you become the king, right? And so Josiah, when he's eight years old, becomes the king of the nation of Judah. Now, of course, when you're eight, you you don't actually take charge of everything. You've got counselors and uh, teachers who are helping you out. And the, the people who raised Josiah and who counseled him and taught him from there, taught him to follow God. And maybe there's some of you who are uh, parents or teachers along the way through your childhood have taught you to follow God. How did that play out for Josiah? Well, it tells us in in 2 Chronicles 34 that he followed God's way, turning neither to the left or to the right. He, He was a good Christian kid doing the right thing when he was a young boy. But then as he got older, he got to his teen years and he started to realize that the the behavior that he'd had, the Christian behavior that he'd had as a kid, that he he needed to grow beyond that and become an adult. He needed to start thinking things through for himself. And so we find out that when he was 16, he made a decision. That decision was that he wanted to seek God, right? That he couldn't just keep doing what he'd been told by his parents and teachers, but he had to seek truth about God himself. And maybe some of you have made that decision or maybe you're coming up to that decision where it's time to realize that you're not a kid anymore but need to seek on your own, figure out what it is you believe about God. Well, Josiah starts that process and that process takes him at least four years. He doesn't make a big discovery about God for another 10 years. And I want to encourage you that perhaps you've started seeking God and then you've been discouraged because you didn't feel like you made progress or you you didn't find him quickly. Be encouraged for Josiah. He starts seeking God and he keeps seeking and it's 10 years, but he does make a big discovery. We're going to get to that soon. And so be encouraged, start seeking God and and persevere in that. It it won't happen straight away, but but it'll happen. And that's when he's 16. By the time he's 20, he started to figure out enough about God. He's learned things that he starts to take some steps of faith and and follow God. He hasn't figured everything out. He hasn't made a big discovery yet. But he starts to try to put it into practice. He starts to um, put it into action in his life. And there's some good advice for us in that. He starts looking for the other things in his life that he's been worshipping and that his people have been worshipping, the different idols and false gods. And he starts destroying them and getting rid of them. He starts when he's 20. And when he's 26, he's still doing that. There's some more encouragement for us that maybe there's things in your life that you know you shouldn't be worshipping. Uh, that get your heart's attention. And you know God wouldn't be pleased with you chasing after those things or following those things, but it's hard to get rid of them, right? And you can't just snap your fingers and, and make those go away, but it's worth persevering for Josiah six long years of, of trying to be more faithful to God and to put those idols aside. Be like him and persevere I'm trying to be faithful to God. When he gets to 26, because he's been stepping out in trust and trying to follow God, even though he doesn't understand everything, He sent some of his guys to go and repair the temple. And this is where Josiah finally makes his big discovery. The guys he sends to repair the temple make a discovery in the temple. They find a whole chunk of the Bible which had been forgotten about. And actually it was the the chunk of the Bible where Moses is talking to God on the people's behalf and he makes an agreement with God where God says, I want to have relationship with you. I want to be your God and you be my people. But if you become my enemies and, and live against me, then instead of relationship, there'll be judgment. Josiah finds that part of the Bible and and he is just smashed by it. Right? He, he breaks down, he tears his clothes, he's in tears because he realizes that he, he and his people haven't been living in relationship with God. They've been disobeying him. And what was the promise there that they would receive judgment? And 
Josiah just collapses and he, he seeks after God and he wants to hear from God on this. And the message that he gets back from God is a beautiful one. It's that even though he has walked away from God and all of the people have and they've disobeyed God and they deserve judgment, that because he's been soft-hearted, he's been responsive, he's turned back to God and humbled himself, that God won't bring on him and the people the judgment that they deserve, that they'll be saved. And that news is amazing for Josiah. Well, that same message is true for us, isn't it? That God has invited us into relationship with him, but he's also said that if we live against him, there's judgment instead. And at the moment that we realize that and and have soft hearts and come back to him, there's forgiveness and he spares us from that judgment and saves us. That's that's glorious. Well, what does Josiah do about that? He he uses his position as the king and he makes sure everyone knows, right? He has it read out to all of the people and tells them about it. And he uses his influence to encourage as many people as possible to turn back to God and start following him. He puts on a party. He, they celebrate the Passover and the whole nation gets together for, it says, the biggest party the nation has done in 500 years. Now, that's how Josiah responds when he makes that discovery about God. Well, that's the eight-year-old Middle Eastern prince. In 1977, in Atlanta, in Georgia, Kanye West was born. And and when he was five, he moved to Chicago, and he too was uh, raised knowing about Jesus, right? His parents were both Christians, and he was raised kind of like Josiah, following God, being a, a good Christian kid. But as he got into his teen years and started deciding what to seek, he made a different decision to Josiah. He decided to seek after other things. He, he started worshipping other gods, as it were. He started worshipping the gods of success and, and fame and, and wealth. And this is what he said about his own childhood. He started chasing those things. And then he too, kind of last year, made a discovery. And here's what he actually had to say, a couple of quotes from him that he has to say about uh, how he looks back at those other things he was worshipping. He says, the God of ego, the God of money, the God of pride, the God of fame. What does he say about them? When I was trying to serve multiple gods, it drove me crazy. I didn't know what it meant to be saved. And now I love Jesus Christ. Right? He realized the same thing. He was worshiping other gods. And then he realized that he'd given up on relationship with God and gone against God, but that if he came back, he would be forgiven and restored. And it changed his life too. And then what did Kanye do about it? Kind of the same in some ways as Josiah. He used his position, didn't he, to make sure everyone knows about Jesus. Here's something that Kanye said since then. He says, now I'm in service to Christ. My job is to spread the gospel, to let people know what Jesus has done for me. You know, I've spread a lot of things. There was a time I was letting you know what high fashion had done for me. I was letting you know what the Hennessy had done for me. I was letting you know all these things. But now I'm letting you know what Jesus has done for me. And in that, I'm no longer a slave. I'm a son now, a son of God. I'm free. Kanye used his position to tell everyone and his influence to get others to trust Jesus. And so I wonder where you're at. Is there a reflection of yourself that you can see in either of these guys? Have you grown up following God, being told by parents and teachers how to live? And maybe you're still in that and it's time to decide what you're going to seek. Are you going to seek after those all the gods of this world like Kanye did, but he says it, it didn't give him any satisfaction. Are you going to choose instead as a, a growing adult to start seeking after God like Josiah did? Are you going to persevere in getting rid of those different idols in your life? Though for Josiah, it took 10 years and for Kanye, surely he's still working on getting rid of some of those things that he was worshipping. Are you going to start putting into action your faith, start taking steps, trusting God, Have you made the discovery yet? Have you discovered like Josiah did and like Kanye did that God is offering you relationship with him? But if you choose to be his enemy and go against him, then instead of relationship, he he promises judgment instead. But that if you with a soft heart turn back to him, he doesn't want to bring that judgment. Instead, he wants to welcome you back as a son or a daughter and love you and forgive you. And if you've made that discovery, Have you done what Josiah and Kanye did? Have you used your position to try to tell everyone you possibly can about the good news of Jesus? Have you used your influence to try and encourage as many people as you possibly can to discover that glorious truth of Jesus and be saved as well?